Why be part of an eco-village network? You can go through the many resources on a website like Gen, and you can stare at a map of eco-villages around the world whilst not being a member. But making an eco-village takes more than just reading about it. <laughs> I could tell you what can be gained, but to really research alternative ways of living, you need to, well, live them. At the start of September, two groups from Sudabin visited two different eco-villages in the Baltic region. I asked them about their thoughts, first impressions, and what they learned from the experience. I'll give you a quick idea of Sudabin, as we're also part of various eco-village networks. We've been a vegan community for a few years now. Our old goose house is going to house edible mushrooms soon, and our hen house shows some promise as an authentic rural Airbnb. We've experimented with off-grid energy solutions, and like any community, we have a particular social and work culture with its own strengths, issues, and quirks. So what did long-term Sudabun resident Sergei think of? Charlotten Dahl teached me some flavors of hospitality and being always, uh, the place is always ready to to host us as a sister community. I've learned how a place can function without solid structure, rather living living with the, with the wind. Whichever direction uh, life gives, uh, people tend to take it. I think people there tend to uh, see their connection to the nature through the animals and by shepherding them they are acknowledging the the way of living of our ancestors and and see and see it as a, a reasonable way of uh, collaboration between the nature animals and uh, humans did seeing that outdoor kitchen give you hope for hours uh, <laughs> i guess seeing i think it's kind of a common trend uh, these outdoor kitchens meanwhile other members of our community travel to <laughs> what? Is that important? Hi, I'm Anna, and uh, together with Enrich, we went to the community small footprint in Estonia to a training course about how to write applications for youth exchanges. At uh, our community meeting here in Sudabyn, a person announced that Small Footprint were in short-term need of two uh, people to participate in that training. So I guess within the community, these things spread. It was very nice that it was hosted in an eco-village to see their place, to feel the vibe of the place, to see how they organize work, community living, the garden. Uh, yeah, it really added something in terms of creating a hands-on perspective also to working in the network and with sustainability. It's always interesting to visit other places and hear about their struggles and what's going on there and how they organize things. So I definitely uh, was very inspired by their garden and how they, with very few people, are maintaining a very big piece of garden. They also went through a lot of struggles in this community and it was very interesting to get to know how they <clears throat> came over it and yeah how they are recreating their community now. This is only a snapshot of the possibilities. By being part of a network, you have access to hundreds of hours of other people's successes and failures that you can learn from. You have the opportunity to make alliances, forge friendships, exchange skills and time. You can get the reassurance that you're not alone in trying to make a different world, a meaningful life, a comfortable home, or all of these things. And more. Good luck. Can you just clap for me? No. Nope. <laughs>